What's up everybody? Welcome to Horror Reviews. So I just got back from seeing Long Legs, like just got out of the theater and just got home, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing because it's fresh in my memory. I just got out of it. I've still got like the tone and vibe of the film in my head. However, I believe this is one of those films that you really need to kind of let marinate over time. And because I am doing this review right after I saw it, I haven't had a chance to let things sink in and marinate yet. But that being said, let's just talk about the fact that this is a pretty hyped up horror film. Now, I this is probably one of my most anticipated horror films of the year, one of my most anticipated films of the year. So I was pretty excited going into this. However, I tried to manage my expectations, the marketing behind this, and everyone that's been talking about this, the 100% that's been sitting on Rotten Tomatoes for like weeks now, all indicate that this is the horror movie to watch. Now, did it live up to that hype? Unfortunately for me, Long Legs just does not live up to that hype. And even if I didn't think it was so hyped, I still would have some issues with this film. That being said, I do think that this is not a bad movie by any means. This is going to be a, a bit of a polarizing film. Just going to the audience, this is one of those films where I don't know if you can relate to this experience, but you know, someone walked out in my theater, a couple walked out like 40 minutes in. I guess they didn't think it was, they didn't realize it was going to be so slow. And then at the end of the film, credits roll. Some people laughed and chuckled and like you get those kind of like, what was that reactions? And then you get people sitting and waiting through credits. So you're, you're getting very opposite, very polarizing reactions to this in theater. So just expect that going in if you're going to go see this with a bunch of people. And this one is directed by Osgood Perkins and stars Micah Monroe and Nicolas Cage. And I feel very similarly about Long Legs as I did about the Black Coat's Daughter. I'm not going to necessarily go into detail about that, but very similar problems, very similar positives. Let's get right into the things that I did personally enjoy about Long Legs. There's going to be no spoilers as of yet. Kicking things right off the bat, the tone, the atmosphere, the trailer was just dripping with creepy tension, and the movie is as well. I will say, I think the trailer did it better, but that being said, yes, this is a creepy film. It is just loaded with atmosphere. It is super, super tense throughout in terms of atmospheric tension using sound design, music, very dark, low light, and just interesting camera work and back and forth through time and storytelling to create a very uneasy tension throughout the entire film, as well as using performances and certain aspects of those performances that are full on display, intentionally trying to make you feel uncomfortable throughout the runtime of this film. Long Legs is shot super well. I really like what they did with the camera work in this. I think there's some really great tracking shots when they're needed. Some very interesting cuts, very interesting um, center framing and very interesting just cutaways that I think create an uneasy tension. I'm thinking specifically of certain elements that I can't exactly explain, but there's like characters that are talking and it'll be like a wide shot and then it'll cut to this like kind of this high, much higher than it should be reverse shot to show someone's face and it just feels like uncomfortable. It's very interesting the way that it's cut and shot and there are, again are very good uses of dark and the lighting in this. Now this one is lit very interestingly because if I were to, now first I think, feel like I need to say I like how modern horror films are lit. I enjoy them. Sometimes they can be accused as being over lit. Like everything is lit. There's moonlight, there's lamp, there's a bunch of practicals, there's like shadows cast everywhere. There, I can see how you could make that argument that like older horror films are lit more so that you can, the darkness works better for scares and you really can't see what's going on. And more modern horror films are lit well and are dark all throughout, but they're constantly like they're over lit. Everything is lit. Everything is thought out. And I like that look. I think it looks very cool. Long Legs is definitely much more in lit in terms of older films. Like if you were just looking at this movie, you'd almost say that, hey, 
they lit half these scenes with just practical lights. Of course, I don't think they actually did, but it looks like that on camera. The dark scenes are very dark. And I don't mean like dark in the way that modern films are just crushed and dark. I mean, like it looks like they just have flashlights, just at exterior lighting from the house. It looks very reminiscent of like older films. And the way that it looks, I think works really well for this film. It works really well for the atmosphere they're trying to create. It looks really cool. Let's talk sound design. The sound design for Long Legs is fantastic. They make really great use of just low like hums and high pitched noises and rattling and breathing. Breathing was a very cool thing. I really appreciated that. I do feel like it was inconsistent throughout the film, but I do appreciate when they used it. I think it worked really well for certain scenes, especially the very early scenes when Micah Monroe's character is running outside with her gun and investigating things and she's breathing really heavily and there's like this tight shot where you're with her and you're kind of like following around and it's really creating this cool creepy tension and when i say the sound design for long legs is good what i mean is when it's there it's good but this silent this excuse me this film uses a lot of silence or a lot of implied uh, sounds and ideas that are not over the top. There's not a lot of like, it's not like Smile where there's a lot of really crazy over the top sound design. It's very used, very, I don't wanna say sparingly because there's a lot of it, but it's again, it's very like muffled or ambient or implied or, you know, working with the music. While we're talking about that, the music for Long Lugs is really good also. And again, does what it's supposed to do. You know, it works well for creating the tone that the film is trying to create. Sometimes it's a little over the top. Sometimes it's kind of loud. Sometimes it's quiet. Sometimes it's understated. Sometimes it's ambient. Sometimes it's, you know, it's just using, it's meant to do a certain thing in the film. And I think that it does its job very well. Real quick, let's talk performances. And Micah Monroe is Micah Monroe, however you say her name is good in this film. I think that this is one of her better performances in my opinion. I have to say I'm not the hugest fan of her and that is not to say I don't like her. I really, really liked her and watch her. I just didn't really like her and it follows that much. I, I think she tends to play her characters the same and they're very like mopey, understated, don't care about everything, bored characters. They're just like, you know, just like kind of wide-eyed to the world and I don't know, she plays it very similarly throughout her performances that I've seen of her. And again, that is not to say that she's necessarily bad. That's not to say that I don't really like her. I'm just not, I never know what I'm to get with her. I'm not a huge fan of her. And the beginning of Long Legs, I got a little bit of that kind of like, I'm a cop, but I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm kind of scared of the world. Kind of just like in my shell performance. And I I don't really like that. She's even when she walks, she walks kind of like she doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't, you know, I just, it was hard for me to buy her as a detective or as a cop right away, which is part of the what my fear going into this. However, I will happily say that like 20 to 30 minutes into the film, probably sooner than that, there's a little bit more of her character that comes through that works better, that makes her a little more like awkward and standoffish, and it works better for her character. But that being said, that like fades away halfway through the film. So then you get a piece of that, and then it kind of like regresses back into her like other characters. Again, that's not to say that she's bad in this film. I don't think she's bad. I think she's good. She carries this film. She has a lot to do, and I think that she's good. It's There's definitely nuances in there, there's just a lot of that staring at the camera and not knowing what to do, staring at other actors, not knowing what to do. And that comes into play a little bit later in the film. I just get a little tired of her hearing a noise and then kind of like looking back, just like in, like in It Follows, and like not knowing how to react. And this, I get a little sick of that. And so that being said, again, I don't think she's bad. That's why it's in the positives. She does deliver a good performance. A lot of this is direction. Two from Osgood Perkins. A lot of it's how she's written, her character's written. Uh, a lot of the flaws I have with it, she is good. Let's talk about Nicolas Cage real quick. 
He's also good in this. And of course, I think a lot of people going in are expecting a real creepy, crazy Nicolas Cage performance. Try not to give too many spoilers away from here. In this, I just want to say going in, if you haven't seen the film yet and you're not don't want to watch spoilers or anything like that, expect Nicolas Cage to be more Nicolas Cage than you expect him to be. I'm just going to say that it's not the wild, crazy, like different performance that I think maybe we thought we were going to get going into this. He's still Nicolas Cage. And that's all I'm really going to say about that. That being said, before I get into the negatives about the performance, I do think he delivers a solid performance. It's creepy. He's on display more than you might think he's going to be in this film. He has a major part in it. Well, sort of. And so he is good. I think he's good. You know, I, I do. I think he's amazing. I, do I think this is just like the performance of the year? No, but I think that he delivers a great performance. I think he's very unsettling. He's intentionally trying to make you feel uncomfortable throughout the runtime of this film. And in that regard, he does what he's supposed to do. Finally, let's just talk about the mystery that goes on in this film, what this, the plot of this film is about. I love this concept of a murderer, long legs, who is being held responsible for murders that take up decades, that span generations, you know, leaving clues behind, very Zodiac-esque that need to be deciphered by the police. That whole concept, very cool. I love this murder mystery that we're going on. Just again, the idea that there's this serial killer on the loose that has not been caught for years and years and years and is responsible for many, many deaths is a really cool concept alone. I like the more of the details you get later on, how he's affecting the families. Um, I like that aspect to an extent. I like what he does with his hands. I'm not going to give any details, but him as a creator, uh, it is what he does with his hands and how he affects the families there, I think is cool. Again, I just, I like the mystery we get. I have a lot of flaws with that, but it is a cool mystery to follow along with. And that being said, Long Legs, to summarize, was a solid, enjoyable film. If I had stumbled upon this on streaming or someone told me to watch this or there was not this hype, and I just went to the theater and I watched it. I'd say, yes, go check this out. It's a creepy, cool, atmospheric film. It's well-made. Filmmaking is top-notch. It's solid. The music is great. There's good performances. There's a cool story going on. Super unsettling. Very well-made horror film that I think a lot of people are going to really enjoy. It's going to be right up some people's alley and some people are just going to not like it. I just... Going in, I think adjust your expectations because it's just not going to be the film I think that a lot of people might think that it is. It's slowly paced. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's supposed to be slowly paced. It works for this film, but just know that. Going in and adjust your expectations accordingly. Let's get into the negatives. Before I talk spoilers, if I even talk spoilers at all, honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't made up my mind yet, but let's talk. No spoilers right now. Negatives about long legs. Unfortunately, the story here just doesn't come together in the end. It just really doesn't work for me entirely. And the mystery that's going on, it just doesn't fully wrap up. It feels a lot like nothing matters in the end. In the end. And I just want to, like, if you're watching this film and you or this review and you disagree with me, just keep in mind, as I go into some of my negatives right now, okay, think about this in terms of a film. Think about this in terms of the fact that Micah Monroe's character, she is an FBI agent. She is a police officer, okay? So when she's going in and investigating some of these things, when she's looking at strange, looking for strange noises, when we get to the climax of the film, she is a cop with a gun, okay? Keep that in mind as we're starting to unravel some of these mysteries or picking up these clues. There are FBI agents who have been tasked to sort of uns to solve this mystery and put these pieces together for decades. Just remember that when you're thinking about this movie decades long, okay? So when you get cops who are incompetent towards the end of the film and come are just kind of completely pointless and there's not really any rhyme or reason for why everything is going on or who is picked besides these dates and these birthdays, these things are going on, I'm not going to give too much away about that, but the dates and the numbers and things like that. Besides that, 
you know, there's not really a whole lot to tie this together for rhyme or reason. And with that, I am getting into spoiler territory. I want to say some spoilers. I do. So I just, the story, unfortunately, just does not come together for me. And I get a lot of Micro Monroe's character towards the end just being completely helpless. And that's like, it's just so unfortunate because you just want to yell at the screen and be like, ah, do this. But I know that's not the point of the movie. But unfortunately, it's just you're telling me a murder mystery story, okay? And if you're going to pose it like that, like if you're going to put it in the, the, the format of a murder mystery and help have us try to solve it, then you've got to give me a little more. It feels like a film where that is like second nature. That doesn't really matter once you figure out what's going on and once you get to the end, like none of that really matters. It was never meant to be solved. It was never meant to be, or it was, but then not explained why. You know, none of this stuff really is explained what matters, what doesn't matter. They just say it does. And unfortunately, like, there is a piece at the end here where we find out a big chunk of information about the main characters and what's going on, and it's literally just given to us. It's just spoken to us. It's narration. It's just exposition delivered. Not necessarily poorly. It's not like it's delivered bad it's not like the movie fails in the aspects of storytelling it's just a crutch you know and speaking of let's get into just a little bit of the like the uh, religious elements i'm not going to give too much detail away there are religious elements in this and if you are frequent to my channel at all you know that i kind of hate when they use religious elements as a crutch like that's just the thing is the thing I hate that, and there's a bit of that in this film, and it's just frustrating. There's not a lot of explanation for why, who's behind it, what's the purpose. It's just because bad, bad, and I hate that. I just I hate when movies rely on that as a heavy-handed crutch for all of your creepy elements. And unfortunately, when you get a creepy, cool, atmospheric film, and then you get to the end, and you go, yeah, creepy, cool is because bad is bad, and religion is bad, and... I, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm obviously, I'm being very blunt about it, but I'm not trying to give spoilers away, but it's just bad for bad sake. That's it. You know, that's what we get because, because of this. And I don't like that aspect of it. And your film is relying on that very heavily, especially when the mystery that's un, un, like unfolding before us doesn't really matter either. So all that being said, I'm gonna talk spoilers real quick. If you have not seen Long Legs, I do genuinely recommend you should go see it. Adjust your expectations, don't go in for the mystery and the story elements, go in for the tone, go in for the atmosphere, go in for the performances. I think you'll have a good time. You're gonna to have to ignore maybe some people in the audience, but it is absolutely worth checking out. If you're a horror fan, especially if you enjoy these types of slow burn atmospheric films, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to have a good time. Again, as I said, just keep those things in your mind. Adjust your expectations. That being said, now I'm going to talk spoilers. This is your warning. If you have not seen Long Legs, I will be talking spoilers right now. First thing let's talk about right off the bat, we get into this sort of element of her being a psychic or knowing things predictions the opening scene is a very cool scene but right away you're like get that line where it's like i'd rather be half psychic or it's better to be half psychic than not psychic at all and immediately for me that just takes away a lot of this mystery element because while we're supposed to be following this character as she's un like unfolding this mystery and piecing together these pe these pieces it's a whole lot of, well, she's psychic or she has a connection. It's not really this, like there's pieces to explain it, but it's not really explained in terms of like the FBI agents can, even when she's talking to the FBI agents, there's a loose note that says, don't do this or I'll kill your mommy. So then she like doesn't explain things to the people who have been tracking the serial killer for decades. And that's a big problem. Like you've got one other cop, two other cops. And they're the ones that are kind of like, let us in on this, all this information that you get. There's not like departments dedicated to this serial killer that's been killing for generations. I mean, come on, right? You've got to like, remember in the back of your mind, these are police officers who are investigating a murder. There's even a scene where Nicolas Cage gets arrested and a bunch of cops come up. This is a big arrest. And yet there's not really any of the cops. There's not anyone else interrogating her. She's allowed to go in there by herself. 
all of these mystery elements, all these things that are unfolding are because she's psychic. She has some connection to the case, you know? We're led, led to believe that she's psychic. So none of it really matters because you can't, like, piece these things together on your own. And that kills the pacing of the movie a little bit. And then when you find out, of course, the end that she's the little girl and you've got this, like, weird element where it's these balls with our, these pieces of Nicolas Cage in them. And that's how he gets these families to be, like, in this trance and kill each other. The aspect of that is cool. I like the idea behind it. But the problem is you don't even necessarily have to tell me how it works. That's fine. But you've got to tell me why. Like, why does it work? And why does it matter? So, again, let's talk about religious elements here, right? They're, like, talking about praising Satan. But, like, why? They haven't really, like, explained why killing these families is a good thing. We're just led to believe that that's something that the Church of Satan wants. We're just led to... In that's implied information. But when you've got like a movie like this, you can't just be like, bad is bad because bad. And they like it when little girls and families die. You've got to like explain to me how these generations of families are either benefiting the, the church. Like if they're not in secret, like they're, this is all kept in secret, right? They're not, they're, people don't know that they're responsible for this. So how is this helping them? How is this helping? Is this a cult? How is this moving them along? Is it just people dying? And if so, can you just brainwash the entire family? Let's just go put a doll in like the whole, the whole world. Let's go put a doll in the police station. Why do you even need to be secret? Like, because the doll unwrapping, like, basically puts them into a trance. So why do we even need to be so secretive? Why do you even need to open their doors? Let's just put a doll on the doorstep. They'll open the package. What's the point of her mom going in there and doing that? I don't understand what the point of that is. Why not just show them the doll? What, just take it into the house. Like, what? why does it need to be secretive? How does that aid this? How does that benefit this? How does it move it, I mean, the story along? Why does it need to be so secretive? And why not just kill more people? I don't understand. Also, why did Nicolas Cage give himself up? So, there's a line there where it's like, oh, this is going to make everybody, he's a piece of, a part of everybody, but how? Like, you didn't explain that to me at all, how him dying really makes things better. I don't understand how that works. So now he's in everybody's minds. What? How does that benefit? Again, what's the goal here? Is the goal just to be bad? Like, it's just bad. Because the Church of Satan wants bad things to happen. So we found this cool doll, and that's the aspect that we decided to go at. We didn't, you know, we don't want to use, like, Ouija boards or, like, possessions. That's, that's old school. Let's just use dolls and have the families kill each other. That's cool, right? But it has to be like only girls with the birthdays that are on the 14th. Like, what does that mean? It's a, again, it's like this element that you're supposed to be like piecing together as a mystery. But then in the end, it kind of means nothing because there's no real motivation for it. What did that help? Because it built this triangle? Again, so then what? When we get to end times, the beast comes out of the ocean. Is that the goal? Are we causing that to happen somehow? Is that is Nicolas Cage causing that to come to fruition through what he's doing? Can you am I supposed to just decipher that because it's in the Bible, because it's in like all of this biblical text and and all of this stuff? I'm just supposed to decipher that, or does nothing really mean anything at all? It's just because that's going to happen, so then it's bad. Or is the Bible and the Church of Satan so? wrapped around the concept of Nicolas Cage's character that it fundamentally relies on him putting a doll in someone's house for the beast to come out of the ocean. I have a problem with that too. So we're just really, really relying on this one character over three decades of all the time that people have been alive. Three or four decades of people dying is what's going to cause the beast to rise from rise in the end of times. Like, is that is that really that important? Then again, so if either it doesn't matter or it matters greatly, and either way you didn't explain either to me. So no, that's, that's a lot of like nitpicks to say, you know, explain the movie to me, explain the movie to me. And I understand this movie's not trying to explain everything to you. Also, I understand that some of this stuff may need to marinate. Some of this stuff may need to sink in later. I got the fact that she was like psychic when she was psychic. She got the test wrong half the time, got it right half the time because she's not psychic. She's got this connection. So I, I pieced that together. I understand that. But it's the fact is you need to tell me why things matter. You don't need to explain every little detail to me, but you need to explain how and why things matter. 
What does this do? What is this accomplishing? What is the point? Why did the mom need to be involved? I don't understand why Nicolas Cage could, he showed up and met the little girl once. Why couldn't he have just left the box on the doorstep? Because timing was really important. Like, was it? Is, is it, it happened six days after the birth day or six days before the birthday. So it seems like they got a week for him to put that box on the doorstep and they could have just opened it up at any point and then the father could have killed the family, right? So does it matter or does it not matter? I don't need you to explain everything to me, but you need you to tell me what is being accomplished. What matters? What doesn't matter? Does the mystery matter? Why did he leave clues? Was he just toying with her character this whole time because she's the one that got away? Why did he leave clues for the police? How come nobody else could decipher these clues? What, what, what was the point of all of that? Again, reality check for a second. These are detectives tracking a murderer from for decades and nobody has any idea about anything else that's going on. And then when they catch him, they're just kind of like, nah, we don't really need to talk to him. You know, you need to like step out of this creepy atmospheric tone for a minute and into the reality, which is that this is a murder mystery and none of it really makes sense. None of it really matters, which is like, then don't, don't show it to us as if it's a murder mystery. Don't let us piece together clues. Find a different way to entertain us throughout the film if nothing really matters. All right, I've probably gone on long enough about that. Let's just quickly talk about Nicolas Cage and his character in this. I, I do think that his performance was good, but it was a little over the top. And I know, I know, Nicolas Cage was over the top. No way. But it's like... I, the parts where he was over the top, some of them work. Some of them are just story elements. Like, he just did it. There was too much, you know? And I know that they showed his face on purpose a lot to try to make you feel uncomfortable. But there were parts that, like, just too much. Like, the line, last line of the film. What was the purpose of that? Like, he's already dead. So is it just to be like, yay, he got his way? Or is it just a last little line that the director was like, that's cool, I want to throw that in there? Because that's what it felt like. The makeup effects on Nicolas Cage 2, again, they look cool, but they look a little too fake, and they just kept taking me out of the film. I just kept saying Nicolas Cage. And I know Nicolas Cage is a good actor. I know he can transform. And the voiceover stuff is super creepy, but unfortunately, when he plays the character, it doesn't sound like that. And I just kept seeing Nicolas Cage, and that just takes you out of the film. Maybe upon rewatch, that'll be fixed. The other thing is the other character, the girl who was the other survivor who's in like the mental institution. I can't, I don't know her name, but she's also in Black Coat's Daughter. And all I saw was the actress. All I could see. She's like curled up and she's trying to do this creepy like monologue. And it's just too much. It's over the top. And it's not, again, I'm not trying to say that it's over the top in a way of like, tone your movie down. Don't go over the top. What I'm trying to say is it doesn't work. It takes you out of the film. I see an actor giving a monologue that doesn't work. I see Nicolas Cage being Nicolas Cage. So when that happens, you take me out of the film. And you know you can do whatever you want. You go as loud, as big as you want. He can scream as much as he want if it works. And unfortunately, pieces of it just don't work entirely. So that's it, everybody. That's my review of Long Legs. Now, as I've mentioned a couple times, after this marinates, the tone and the atmosphere does stick with you. So after I think about the film a little bit, it might grow on me or it might get worse. It just, you know, they can go either direction. It's one of those films. And so, like I said, if you watch the spoilers and you still are thinking about going to see it, I still think you should go see it. Absolutely. It's well made. Very well made. The filmmaking here is top notch. I just think there's a lot of flaws in the film in terms of story elements, in terms of character choices, in terms of what they decide to show and not to show. So thank you for watching, everybody. Let me know what you guys thought about Long Legs down below. Do you agree with some of my negatives here, or did it just knock it out of the park for you? And if it did, please explain to me below like what really worked for you and what didn't. With well, some of the elements I didn't like, why did they work for you? Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. I don't want to scared on a big bad wolf. Oh, I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in caps, dog. Everything bold. And I put that on myself because it's a life that I done chose. I said, come through. You can see me on the west side. Now it's funny how they walking.